Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Joey Galvez, one half of your host of Explain Yourself, and I want to let you guys know about a really cool book from our friend of the show, Eli Shockey. This one is called The Grey Luck, and it's a story where magic is a commodity. Potions are sold at corner stores. Orcs and dwarves earn a living in cubicles, not on the battlefields. But there are those who resist the house's magic laws, branded a criminal and forced to live as a want for hire. There is a spell slinger they call the Greylock. Check this one out. You guys can pre-order issue three right now with code JAN241939. And make sure you guys are heading over to your favorite LCS and letting them know that you want Greylock number three and maybe pick up the first two issues. Uh, you could do that at the Scout web store. So make sure you guys are grabbing the Greylock number three, JAN241939 at previewsworld.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Collin II, and with me as always is... Sesame Knight and Carta. Okay, Sesame Knight and Carta. Mm -hmm. I love having Sesame Knights. Those are fun. Yeah. We just eat sesame seed buns. Yeah. <laughs> make a party out of it. Just yes. eat sesame seed buns. Yes. That's that's your party. And every time you open up a door, you'll be like, "Sesame!" And then, um, <laughs> yeah, op- yeah, open sesame, and that's and then that's the party theme is sesame seeds and sesame seed buns. That's it. There's no burger on it or anything like no. that. And we just no one really comes to those parties though, you know, because it's not really we throw sesame you know, seeds that, at each other. Yeah, it's, yeah, usually, it's not that. It's usually it's just really me. Par- What's that? So it's usually just me. Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a niche kind of theme. <clears throat> but who knows? I might find someone that's into it. So yeah, a lot of kinks out there, you know. So um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the sesame sesame seed kink. Yes, <laughs> it's not sexual or anything. It's just nope. you know. <laughs> <laughs> we just sit in chairs and throw sesame seeds at each other. Yeah, it's, it's fun. That's it. Yep, that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> so, anyways, um, today on the show we are covering <clears throat> the first episode of the Disney Plus series Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Yes, uh, the first episode is entitled "The Goldfish Problem." It was uh, directed by Mohammed uh, Diab. Diab. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it, D-I-A-B, um, written by Jeremy Slater and originally aired or was released on March 30th, 2022. So, uh, yep. first off, Sesame, what are your thoughts on this? You know, I really liked it. I think it was the best first episode of an MCU show since, um... Maybe Loki mm-hmm. uh, or even Hawkeye. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. I kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think Hawkeye and in this would be like a tie for like the best first episode of a MCU series. Um, that's just me, but yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. My only issue was I think that they're, but then again, um, all the other shows had this kind of mystery thing building up mm-hmm. throughout and certain things. Um, this didn't have like a cliffhanger sort of ending or anything. So it just kind of ended in the middle of a about to be <clears throat> fight and went to the That's credits. Kind of a cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean it is. I'm just saying it's not like you're what we're used to on these Marvel shows, which is fine. I mean, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying that that's different, you know. Yeah. 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 Um 
it was an interesting show. I like how they're dealing with uh, dissociative identity disorder. And uh, because that's basically what our main character has. Where he has like what, you know, sometimes referred to as multiple personality disorder or <clears> schizophrenia, <throat> which are both wrong names for it. But that's what people yeah, have referred to in the past. <clears throat> yeah. There, yeah, there's a lot of about new science behind it. Yeah, it's, but it's uh, basically DLC. <clears throat> yeah, um, which is interesting because you know, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I noticed that the the new new Marvel shows are they're bringing in people with um, you know what are considered disabilities. You know, you got you know, um, I forgot her name, Echo. You know, she's yeah. you know she's deaf and she's got you know one leg that's like metal or, or whatever uh you got hawkeye himself he's kind of going deaf yeah. um you know we're starting it. of course you know the anti-woke people will be mad about all that stuff like why do they need representation it should just be normal people but you know whatever <clears throat> you know, because because they're you know yeah. they're the arbitrator they're normal but um there is no such thing as normal yeah i know so now we got someone with like a you know mental health issue which is is a main character <clears throat> but you know, you know, that's not like the their whole thing. You know, like because that's the other thing too is like a lot of a lot of shows in the past would, <clears throat> if they had like a character like that, that would be like their whole story would be just revolving around that. Like if you had a trans character, like they're the trans character. Like that's it. Like yeah. there's no, you know, what I mean, like um, <clears throat> like they're not like a superhero or they don't have anything else no. going on. You know, I mean, so wait like, to get the, wait till they like, get to the part where he's Jewish. Um. <laughs> Oh yeah, well of course, and no. you know, a lot of people would be mad about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, wait a minute, why are we gonna have this? You know, <clears throat> an Egyptian god? What the hell? You know, I don't understand. Yeah, okay, great. Yep. But um, <clears throat> anyway, so, social commentary aside, which is what everyone yeah. comes here for, apparently, which they don't, but uh, maybe <laughs> they're just stuck with it because they're stuck with me. And uh, <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> Yeah, what was I saying? I mean, it's a it's a good um, it's a good interesting um, you know first step on the show. Um, and um, I mean, so far we have like no real connection to the to the greater MCU, which is interesting too. So we'll see if we end up having any at all. <laughs> well, I thought I thought I read somewhere where it is technically part of the mcu but oh, oh it, it is i'm just saying so far in the show we have no connection oh yeah yeah, yeah i see <laughs> yeah it, it would is, be it weird, yeah, part because... of it, but what, I, what i'm saying is it's not like uh we none of these characters that we've met yet have we've met before right and uh and now we're dealing with like actual gods <clears throat> which is weird um because like we haven't really dealt with like god gods like we have like odin like Thor, but like they're like regular people. Like they're not like and we have the technically the top god. What's that? We have the Eternals who, oh yeah, were viewed as gods. But um, but that's like our first introduction to like an yeah. actual, <clears throat> um, I guess personality would be the right word. Like 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 what you would well, consider a god to act like. I guess is what I'm. It, it's kind of like, like um. It's kind of like I think the Eternals was <clears throat> our was our um was supposed to be, I mean, unfortunately it didn't do as well as they were hoping our entrance into the like more theological, mystical sort of aspect of the MCU. Um, kind of like how yeah. guardians of the galaxy was our entrance entrance mm -hmm. into like the space aspect of, you know, the MCU. Right. And Dr. Strange is like in the mystic arts, but yeah. that's not, that's not dealing with like actual, you know, gods per se. So now we're getting to ancient Egypt. We'll see how accurate. Probably won't be that accurate, but like um, yeah. somewhat accurate. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting to talk about actual gods, um, or if they're if they actually turn out to be actual gods, and you know, if not just like aliens or whatever that are pretending to be gods, or yeah, you know, whatever. We'll see. We only we're only one episode in, so. Yes. Um, so, all right, now that we got that out of the way, what, uh, what happens in this episode here? Uh, Stephen Grant, is that his name, Stephen Grant? Yeah, Stephen Grant. Um, he, 
he wakes up, you know, he's doing his daily routine. Uh, he's, uh, well, no, actually, what starts off is a really interesting scene. So there's this guy, he's, like, doing kind of like a ritual. He's got, like, a glass of water, and then he drinks it. And he kind of... He kind of rubs his finger around the edges to kind of, you know, symbolize something, whatever. Creates and he drinks the water. Creates a sound mm-hmm. too, like you do with. You know. Yeah, kind of like a Buddhist sort mm-hmm. of like, um, like a meditation bowl type thing. And then, um, and then he uh, drink, you know, drinks the water or whatever it was, and you know, in there could have been anything. And then um, he flips the glass over. He takes a uh, like a hammer that's got like a crocodile head, which is interesting because um, one of my um, YouTube channels, like, there's a big, big character thing where I have a character named Crocodile. But anyway, that's a whole funny, interesting little thing. Anyway, so he like he bashes the glass. He like wraps it up in like a towel that he had like sitting down, uh, you know, underneath the, the glass. And then he he bashes it, and then he pours the the sharded um, shreds of glass into his his like shoes, which are kind of like um, sandals type of shoes, Crocs maybe. I don't know. And then yeah. um, <laughs> Crocs. And he puts, well, not Crocs. It was kind of like Crocs, yeah, I just but it was like funny because there's like an alligator and a crocodile. And... Oh, it's probably a crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, um, yeah. So he, um, he, you know, he puts it in his, his shoes. And by the way, they're playing a Bob Dylan song, which is a very a religious song to him because there was a, a period where he he became a born again Christian and he wrote like a gospel record. I'm not sure if he's like super religious anymore, but he was at that time. Yeah. And uh, the psalm was talking about like the master and you know stuff like that. So there's this <clears throat> this psalm playing in the background, and he, you know, he puts his uh, you know feet in the shoes, showing no signs of pain whatsoever. And um, and then he just walks away, and he's got like his you know his cane, which has got the the crocodile head, and um, and so that's that's our intro introduction to the um, Ethan Klein character, which is, I forgot his name. What's his name? Um, the, the Ethan Hawke character? Sorry, not Ethan Klein, yeah, Ethan yeah. Hawke. What's his yeah. name? Um, um, it's, uh, his character's name is Arthur Harrow. That's right, which is weird, because he only shows up one time in the actual comic books. <clears throat> I think in the first issue, and then he never shows up again. So, it's interesting. He might become the main character villain in this this sub um, series, but like in the books, he's not anything. Like he's just. Um, and the, uh, the, Bob Dil- the Bob Dylan song, by the way, is called "Every Grain of Sand." Right. Okay. Wait, which which makes Get sense. It? You know. Yeah. You you mm-hmm. use sand to make glass too. So. He's taking the glass, right. and turning it back into sand, and putting it in his shoes in a way. So. Which is interesting too, because that could show sort of like. Uh, you know, that he's kind of maybe upgraded a little bit because Steven later on, he shows that he's got sand in his bedroom to track his footprints, but glass is more like refined yeah. sand, so it could be kind of suggesting that it's Arthur might symbolic be... of like how you walk over coals, like hot coals or <clears throat> other things, or like self-flagellation in a way, you know, sort of, like, well, sort of yeah. Yeah, like we'll see, we'll, we'll probably get into that too, because like like I said too, he, he showed no sense of pain, he, he could be feeling it, but he's not showing any sense of pain whatsoever, and then he just walks away, and then that's that's the end of that scene, and then then we get into Steven waking up, and he's um he's got a holster tied to his leg, or his foot, uh, and he has to unlock that to get out of bed, and then he's got a um, big pile of sand right up, right you know, next to his um, bed. Yeah, so, so like, he can so he can tell if he walked at all. <clears throat> yeah, and then he's got a piece of blue tape that's on his door, all kinds of contraptions to see if whether whether or not he did anything that night, or which still doesn't really make a lot of sense because like even like with those things, you could just like put the tape back up, like, you know what I mean? And shackle your leg again. Like that doesn't really yeah, well, seem much like that. Well, well, he doesn't know that he's, uh, he knows he blacks out, but he doesn't know like, um, that he has a separate personality yet. So. Oh, okay. I, think he, I, well, I, think I get he that. He's just blacking out. So he doesn't think that he would do this while he's blacking out. Okay. But the yeah, thing, yeah. The thing with it is, is that his, his other identity is what's doing it. So. It's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not so really him doing it. So <clears throat> yeah, that makes sense. 
And then so we find out, you know, he's just a regular dude. He works at a gift shop at the museum, but he really wants to be more of like a tour guide because he has, you know, extensive knowledge on, you know, Egyptian mythology, but his boss is this really mean woman who's probably has a really miserable life, so she takes it out on him. And um, you know, and that's pretty much it for him. I mean, like he's there is one little scene though that's interesting because um he catches some girl like and then um he starts talking to her about, you know, Egypt or whatever. He was talking about how the um the dead needed their hearts still yeah. to like be able to go to the afterlife or whatever. And she said something like, um, well, did that suck for you when you die or something like that? And he's like, I, I, I haven't died or something like that. It was, it was a weird kind of response. like, Yeah, with the little girl. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so that's that's my sort of recap at the beginning. So what, what, what do you yeah, got so like Yeah, so he's in the... Um, one thing, too, is like when he uh, walks in, there's a security guard at the, at the desk several times. This is, I don't know how many times this happens in the episode, but uh, the um, security guard calls him um, calls him Mark. <laughs> so that's interesting. <laughs> and he has to correct it. Also, his boss calls him Stevie, and he keeps correcting her that it's Steven. Right. <laughs> um, with a V. And um, the, uh, which is interesting. I mean, this, these are a lot of like things that are allusions to his his uh, multiple identities that he has and um <clears throat> so it's uh it's kind of interesting that they're uh playing there's a lot of things that play at the multiple identities here throughout the thing too like um some of the music cues and things of that nature too yeah they have like a it's interesting too like that at one point they have like a the lyrics to some of the songs play up that idea they also have a uh, a rap song that uses a sample of another song, so that kind of plays with the idea <laughs> of being part of, you know, if if you read into it a lot of ways, you know. So, right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, what when we're in the uh in the museum, he's he's there and he sells like candy to kids and stuff at the museum, which he doesn't get because it has nothing to do with Egypt. Um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> the um. While he's there, this uh, attractive woman comes up and turns out he asked her out and didn't remember it for the following night to go eat <laughs> steak, which is weird because he's vegan. <laughs> yeah, so so there's that. Um, anyways, uh, then after he leaves work, he's outside talking to a uh, one of those human statues. Um, who's like a guy who's all painted up gold and kind of looks like John Lennon for some reason to me, but <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that's basically what happens there. Um, and I guess he looks kind of like a character in the comic books too, from what I've read. Can't remember <clears throat> the character's name though, off the top of my head. Yeah, I saw something like that too. He looks. I see. I couldn't tell if he was an actual statue or, or a person. Oh no, he was a person. You could. Okay. Yeah, if he looked close <clears throat> enough. Yeah. Um. So, uh, he uh, he has this uh point where he he goes uh he goes home and he he's, he goes to sleep at night. He wakes up in another country altogether <laughs> and then uh, witnesses like this cult meeting led by Ethan Hawke's character of Arthur Harrow. Um, and when he wakes up there, he also has a scarab in his, a golden scarab in his hand. <laughs> um, the, uh, while there during this like cult meeting that he witnesses, <clears throat> Harrow has this scale tattoo on his arm that is able to help judge people whether they're good or bad and uh it moves and the <laughs> ends of the ends of it look like a alligator or a crocodile as well which are interesting mm -hmm. um and he uh 
he's basically he's uh he's he's using this uh Anubis god goddess that um a jackal monster that um is is that the is that the or no no goddess Am Amet, sorry, not Anubis. Anubis yeah, Amet, is a yeah, yeah is the <laughs> jackal monster later, sorry. <laughs> I was jumping ahead. <laughs> um but Amet, who is like this uh goddess who I guess judges people. And uh he uh he basically ends up killing this old lady because she's not good even though she's lived a good life and he says that she's it, it's kind of like a almost like a minority report sort of thing where you got a precognition to what's going on you know in her life that she's going to be bad right well Amit, yeah see Amit's supposed to judge your past present and future so you know that's kind of what it is it's like she may have lived a good life now, but two days from now, maybe she'll murder someone, but she won't know it until, you know, it happens or whatever. <clears throat> and, um, which is, you know, kind of dangerous <laughs> in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. If you've mm. ever seen the movie minority report, we know why that's dangerous. So we know why the thing, plus we got God doing it now, not technology. And, um, yeah, and the thing is though, he looked, he looked genuinely sorry. Like I, I think at least for now, he he does seem like he's a true believer. Like he does not seem like he's a con man. I think he, like, and I have a theory actually for later on, like like the series finale or maybe even close. I think Amit's gonna judge him unworthy. I think he's just gonna accept it because I think he's so devoted to her that even if she judges him not worthy, he's like, okay, well that's her decision. Like you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, we'll would, that, see. Would, that would make sense. That'd be good writing if they do do that, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, um, we'll see, yeah. <laughs> That's just something I thought of earlier, yeah. So, um, what happens next? Um, well, yeah, he wakes up, his jaw's all out of lock and stuff, so he's got to crack that back. That looked really weird. And um, <clears throat> these guys start shooting at him, and, you know, because, you know, he's like, he's Mark Spencer Mercenary at that point. <clears throat> and um or sorry as far as we know and then uh he you know he puts his uh hoodie on just weird because it's kind of like a white hoodie so it's sort of like a uh kind of like a what what do you call it like a not precursor like a oh a, a, a I, pr- like a like a um <clears throat> premonition i can't think of the word uh, but whatever uh, um, uh oh uh oh foreshadowing yeah, there you go foreshadowing yeah and yeah, yeah mark specter yeah. is his other name so yeah <laughs> yeah so, so he, um, he's, he's recognized by Harrow and, uh, but he's, he thinks he's the Mark Spencer character. And, um, and he's like, Oh, like you, you know, you, you come here, like you dare to come here type of thing. But Steven has no idea what's going on. So, <clears throat> so he's like, um, like, you know, please give us the scarab or whatever. So he's like, yeah, sure. I'll, you know, I'll give it to you. But then like, you hear like a voice of Kanshu is like, don't let him, you know, don't, don't give him anything or whatever. So like, he'll like grant, you know, put his fist over it real hard. So he can't give it to him. So he's trying to like, trying to pry his fingers open. And then he, his arm like goes way back and he's like trying to like move his body. So his arm will at least, you know, <laughs> yeah, then, it is, then he just starts walking like backwards or whatever. Like he's not controlling his body whatsoever. Like, yeah, and, and Kanchu is is voiced by F. Murray Abraham, so right, which is cool. Which, you know, that guy was in um, Homeland, great actor. Um, yeah, and he was in, <clears throat> you know, Amadeus. That's so, right, Amadeus. He was he played um, what was the guy's name? The, the rival Saliari. composer. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. About, yeah, that was a great mm-hmm. movie, and uh, he was great, great in that too. Yeah, so Kanchu though does not like Stephen. He's like constantly like demeaning him the whole time like oh the idiot's in charge again it's like dude like fuck off like he doesn't know what's going on like you know like um, like you know it's not his fault and well that's what i tell myself all the time but um what that the idiot's in charge oh wait sorry (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) the idiot's in charge again yeah you know at one point he calls him a worm he's like well like um sacrifice or give the body back to mark you worm and it's like you know so it's like a very like mean spirited god like <clears throat> so it kind of makes me wonder like you know you know Amit's supposed to be bad well Amit's just judging people based on her like her extensive extensive knowledge of the past present and future so 
That's not like that's basically what you would call predestination in theology or philosophy. So like that's so we're getting into that. So you know she might not be bad. It's just she just might know that someone's gonna do something really bad in the future. It's not her fault that the person's gonna do that. And you know you know it would be wrong to from her perspective it would be wrong not to judge them. Like if someone just decides one day they're going to become a serial killer, they've done nothing wrong throughout their entire life. Do you not judge that person, or do you wait for them to become a serial killer and let them kill fifty people? Before, you know what I mean. So, like, do those fifty people deserve to die no, too? The, like, that's you know, the so whole the, thing, the, though. Like, it, it, it's it's kind of like a cop with a gun, though. So you kind of. <laughs> You know? what's that, what, what's that? I didn't hear it's kind of like a cop with a gun you know you kind of don't know you know <laughs> should you judge oh, yeah, somebody but, um, before they do something well no yeah but um it's um it's a little bit better than that because yeah. she has knowledge <laughs> well, as far as we know yeah who knows arthur could just have the power and he could just be deciding on his own who's worthy or not just to keep up yeah the charade of, i'm at man not even exist who knows you know yeah so. we don't know but the thing is though if he is putting glass in his shoe and and no one sees him do this so it's a private matter that kind of does imply that he does believe because why would you do that if no one's watching yeah, you he like, has these ritualistic thing, so. ritualistic uh you know um you know habits and stuff that are only to him so yeah right and it could be and it could and that could be like almost a sense of atonement to him too like maybe maybe he thinks giving himself pain might be a way of pleasing Amit like in case she does judge him unworthy he's doing like these sort of like free mature ways of like oh well yeah but I've been putting glass in my shoe and <laughs> shit you know I don't know but um but anyway yeah the- theology is going to play a big part in the show I really do think uh, or, or philosophy at least philosophy um which we haven't really seen um <clears throat> too much yet in the MCU we've seen hints of it here and there but not not a whole lot so uh, anyway, sorry, I got... I yeah, no, that's fine. Do you want to take a quick break and come back and uh, yeah. talk about the rest of the episode? Yeah. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. No Outlet Live. Hey, I'm Jay Remy, host of No Outlet Live. If you're in a podcast that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, or just type No Outlet Live, one word, in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. And we are back. Yeah. <clears throat> and during the break, we have learned that a scarab is just a type of beetle, much like Ringo. Yeah. Yes. Ringo to the stars. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm going to just call the scarab from now on Ringo. E- yeah. Okay. <laughs> you <can do> that. Um, <laughs> go ahead and do that. Sure. Uh, why not? I could call it Pete <clears throat> Best or something. Um, Pete, but the- <laughs> yeah, God, No, don't. Because he'll write another book about. <laughs> oh, he was in the Beatle for like six months, and you know, <laughs> God, it always it makes me feel so bad for people like that, where it's like they won't let go of like well, like this it, chance it, that they it, had. It did develop into the movie The Rocker. It did, kind of, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, no, um, no, he, um, Pete Best was a was a consultant on that. Oh, he was. Yeah, oh, it was originally okay. supposed to be a movie about his life, but then they turned it into a modern day comedy. <laughs> so yeah, that would have been much, that's much better than what the movie would. Yeah, because it's you know Rain Wilson, great movie. Yeah, it's just a shame that Rain Wilson, you know, like he can never get past Dwight True, and it's like I know. it's not his fault. It's just like people are stupid, and they just want to hear like the classics, like the whole thing with um, what was that comedian's name? God, I'm like I can't think of people. Like I'm worried, like my cognitive skills are going away. Like the the dude, you know, like the the guy from Taxi. What was his name? The, oh, Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. Yeah, like you know, he was like doing this weird avant garde comedy, and people just wanted to hear him quote lines from a TV show. Which again doesn't make any sense. How would that entertain people? Like you're not even watching the show. Which is and so how would the which is interesting line, because the movie Man on the Moon was directed by Milos Forman, who also directed Amadeus. Well, oh my God! So now we got a whole <laughs> <clears throat> we got a whole thing going on here. Yes. Um, Not to mention the fact that um, Ethan Hawke um, said that he was inspired by his first performance by cult leader David Koresh, 
psychiatrist Carl, Carl Jung, uh, communist dictator Fidel Castro, the <laughs> Dalai Lama, writer what? Leo Tol- Tol- Tolstoy, Pentecostal televangelist Jimmy Swigert, wow, Nazi officer and Dr. Joseph Mengele, and the-, the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest character mm-hmm. Nurse Ratchet, and the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <clears throat> was directed by Milos Forman. And, um... <laughs> what the hell? I haven't seen... I've only seen, like, one of those people manifest in them. Who knows? Maybe we'll yeah, see more. Rock. He also said, <laughs> he says, as well as a questioning... As well as questioning if Apple Incorporated co-founder Steve Jobs was a bad guy. Like, he's playing him like Steve Jobs if he were a bad guy. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so... Very, very interesting. By the way, too... I wanted to mention. So <clears throat> when the when the tattoo judges you like unworthy, it turns red. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure if there's symbolism behind that, but um, <clears throat> well, red um, red is often symbolic of death. So okay, yeah, kind of like the the red door in American Beauty. Um, also the red doorknob in. Uh, Six cents. Different movies will have red as a symbol symbolism of, okay. of somebody who's already dead. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> to spoil those okay. '90s movies. Anyway, so um. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, they're 24 year old movies, so it's like, <laughs> <clears throat> I think it's all right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so um, what happens next here? We've got um, we've got Stephen basically trying to get out of this uh, situation he's in where the, you know, where he's got this scarab that he's trying to give back. Anyways, it gets to the point where he's trying to run away because he realizes he can't give the scarab back. Eventually somebody, (laughs) they tackle him and they take it away from him. And then uh, his identity of Mark takes over. (laughs) I love how they're doing this too, too, where we don't see what happens when Mark's in control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like this weird flashing like thing happens, and then yeah, it's pretty. So, it's so pretty we're like, cool I, I don't know if they're going to continue to do it the whole series, but it's interesting because we like black out with uh, with Stephen here, so we don't know what happened, and we're on the same page as yeah. Stephen. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't think they're going to do it for the rest of the series, but but for this particular episode, it's, yeah, because yeah, we're <clears throat> we're we're learning with Stephen, we're identifying with Stephen. Uh, in this episode, which is interesting because uh, I was watching a Screen Crush video earlier and they, he was talking about the uh, different personalities of Mark and he made the point that this is sort of like a reverse Fight Club thing where Mark is the prime personality, so basically he's the Tyler Durgan character, but he created the Steven character, which is like the weak-minded, yeah. you know, like normal guy, you know? <laughs> So it's kind of like the, basically the, the 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 created character is the <clears throat> is the Edward Norton character and not the Brad Pitt character. Yeah, so it's, I thought that was a really interesting um, analogy because I think it's correct. Actually, mm-hmm. I think it's a great analogy. Uh, that would that would have changed Fight Club like a lot though too. If that because, happened, because like <laughs> the things if you notice here too, like um, he has uh, you never see he. He calls his mom, but you never hear him talk to her. Um, right, it's always a voicemail. Yeah, you. Uh, he gets postcards from his mom, but most of those postcards are of Egyptian things that he could have got at the uh, at his place of work. <clears throat> right, and how come his mom is never leaving voicemails herself and just sending postcards? Yeah, like. Who does that anymore with cell phones mm-hmm. available everywhere? Like, so he's you can buy a cell those. phone. So my my like, theory is he's sending those to himself. So, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, who is he calling? Who knows? Layla, maybe we find the file. There's a woman named Layla who's been or, calling. Or to, or to set up phone. a thing, maybe he just set up a fake phone number just so he could have it. <clears> so he had somebody to call yeah. when he was Steven. <clears> um, like a burner phone or something like that. Speaking of burner phones. That phone that well we're getting ahead of ourselves, yeah. but um. So so basically, yeah, what we have is a yeah. situation where he takes out all these people and ends up getting the scarab back, and then he wakes up again from the blacking out, and uh, he's on the run and he takes this uh, like cupcake truck <laughs> down the side of a mountain to outrun 
these people. And then uh, he, he's driving a lot of the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, the country tells him to let, you know, let Mark take control. And Mark does. And yeah, but one part, it was kind of funny, though. He like didn't know what to do. And he threw, gu- threw a gun at a car. <laughs> and he's like, did he just throw a gun? Yeah. <laughs> so it was an interesting <clears throat> little. I, I like the way how we're not really seeing the action. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's very jarring. It's 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 like it's and it's almost scarier that way because like you see him covered in blood, or his hand at least is covered in blood at one point. Like, did he just, like gouge someone's eyes out? Like, what the hell? Like, you know, I was reading <laughs> uh, reading an article with some of the creators of the show, and they were talking about they actually storyboarded all of the action that we don't see. Oh, that's amazing! So they knew where to have him end up at the end of it. So, <laughs> yeah, that is so cool. And at one point, he. Shoves a cup guy in the guy's face. That's his way of fighting back. Um, uh, He, Kanchu, like I said, really like disrespects Steven. Like he just thinks he's like just the uh, worthless person. But he's also starting to get angry at Mark because Mark is losing control of Steven. So I'm starting to wonder, you know, is there going to be a sort of integration of personalities coming at some point? Because Steven's getting stronger without knowing he is because he's somehow able to like take over Mark when Mark is supposed to be the primary, you know, I mean, it's kind of of almost too, like in a way it's like, you've got this whole like wrong man situation, like the the wrong man, like the, there's a, uh, um, Hitchcock movie that he did twice. Actually, he remade the movie twice where uh, it's, it's about a guy who's mistaken for an international spy because he looks like him. So, Oh, it's wow. kind of like that, like kind of like Steven is kind of in a similar situation, except for it's all in the same body as opposed to two guys that just happen to be like twins. Right. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, the, uh, anyways, the, um, the whole, uh, so he wakes up after this situation, you know, and thinks it was all just a dream, which would be a messed up dream. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, so what happens after he wakes up? Um, are, are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Um, he, he finds out that his fish has two fins now because it had one fin. Yeah. <clears throat> and then he, he goes, he returns it to the store and he's, he's asking the, you know, the lady who, who works there, you know, if, you know, a fish can grow an extra fin or whatever. Um, and she's like, no, they all have two fins here. It's like, if you want to buy a disabled fish, I'm pretty sure there's other stories or whatever. Yeah. No, no. And then she's like, like, like I told you yesterday, he's like, wait, no, I wasn't here yesterday. And she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. And, yeah. So basically what it seems like is that he just bought another mm-hmm. fish to replace the other fish that died because he didn't feed it. And, um, Oh, uh, I hope that's not the case. Yeah, because yeah, because well, yeah, he flew to mm-hmm. another country. Yeah, sometimes and, that's probably and what happened. who knows how long he was gone. Yeah, and uh, it's interesting too that they use a goldfish because there's the the misnomer, which uh, everybody says is the goldfish memory thing, where goldfish only remember for like seconds. Yeah, like they have a short term memory, which is not true, by the way. But everybody <laughs> believed that for the longest time. But so the, oh, they're playing with that idea. Yeah, but they're, <clears throat> you know, well, they didn't. I think at the time they thought it was true, but um, right. But and so he goes back to yeah. work, and his boss is still being really mean to him. She's making him do inventory because he's always late. And again, <clears throat> she's a mean boss, but like she still keeps him on even though he's late like all the time. Yeah, like I mean, so, most what she's dealing don't... with too. She's dealing with this guy with two personalities, so with at least two personalities that we know of. So it's like, <laughs> so she might not even like, yeah, maybe the other one's more of a charmer or something like yeah. that. So she will deal with it. Or more of an uh, asshole to her. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring up too, was like when they, when he brought the goldfish to the, to the store, he put it in a blender. Oh, okay. And I think that's kind of symbolic in certain ways because of the idea that things can get mixed up. <clears throat> in a blender. Like his life is in the blender. His yeah. mind's in the blender. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. So he goes back to work. um, He finds Arthur on the bus after he gets off the bus. So he's starting to freak out a little bit. 
Um, he actually no before that what happened is so he he's um he goes on a date or he was supposed to go on a date with that really attractive woman to the steakhouse, but it was Sunday instead of Friday, so two days went by. He had no idea, and then he calls her up and she's you know you know obviously she's she's upset, upset and tells him to lose the number. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, someone like who's attractive like that can afford to be like, all right, well, yeah. fuck you. You know, I could find someone else who's going to actually meet me at the right place or whatever. I got screwed up, too, because I thought that I thought his boss meant that she was a vegan and that he was so charming that he convinced her to oh, go to a gotcha. state restaurant. That's what I thought at first. I'm like, whoa, like, no, no, that he, must have been Mark he is, in and control. Then, and then it, there is a little bit of symbol- symbolism there that he that Mark is kind of integrating with him because at the end of the seen at the at the steakhouse he decides to order a steak he doesn't know how to though but because he's vegan so exactly he's yeah. like it was such a bad scene too he's like what kind of cut would you like it's like just the, the good like just the best kind and yeah, the best okay best bits. <laughs> yeah the best bits and how how would you like that cook like good good he's like oh uh, i guess i'll i'll put you as medium well or, or yeah or, well done or whatever mm-hmm. which apparently Steak lovers think that's terrible. That's like a thing, I guess. Like, yeah, I, I guess it just depends it. on the lovers. So, I know <laughs> does, people yeah. like it all different ways. Personally, so, yeah. I like mine on a rare side, but that could just be because I'm like a werewolf or something like that. But, um, <clears throat> and we are talking about people know that. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, <laughs> so he, he's, he's, um, he, you know, he brought her like candy and stuff. Like, he was really excited to go out with her. But it was the wrong day, <clears throat> so he's you know depression eating at home and dejected. He, he gives some sprinkles to the fish. Doesn't happen. Does nothing happen? Or is that when he realized he had two fins? I don't remember. I'm 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 kind of maybe I don't remember yeah, the timeline. But whatever it is. Um. Anyways, uh, he uh, yeah, yeah. That that I think that was after because I think I'm pretty sure okay. that was after he went to the pet store. Um, okay. But yeah, but then he he ends up back at the at work and uh arthur shows up and we realize that that some of the other people working there are basically part of arthur's little cult so it's like one of those weird things but i was gonna say though before that so he finds when he's depression eating he finds something weird oh yeah I and then like, on that. the floorboard so he steps up and he finds a hidden like old nokia like old type cell phone from like 2003 or something like that. Yeah. And then he sees all these missed calls from a woman named Layla. And there's one other one, the guy who called him. And then he, um, he's about to call Layla, but then she calls right at the same moment. And then she's like, you know, you know, like, Oh, thank God you're alive. It's been, I've been trying to call you for months now. You know, you just, you like just fell off the face of the earth or whatever. And she calls him Mark. And he's like, why, why did you just call me Mark? And then she hangs up. So I'm starting to wonder, <clears throat> did Mark tell her about the fact that he has this disorder? And then so when, when she called him and, and then realized that that wasn't talking to Mark, it's like, oh, shit, I better hang up now because I don't, I don't want this guy knowing too much, you know, whatever. I don't know, but my thing is, is why would Mark be avoiding her calls for all this time, too? Yeah, I guess that's a good question. Maybe to keep her safe or something. I don't know. And, um... Mm-hmm. Or unless, yeah, she's, yeah, unless maybe exactly. she's a villain and we, you know, <clears throat> yeah, maybe. And, um, uh, so yeah, so that's, then I, I just wanted to, I wanted to bring that up because that's what happens before he goes to work the next day. And then, yeah, that's when we see that, you know, Harold's got followers inside the museum. I'm like, Oh my God. And, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. And he, he's like <laughs> talking about how he's an avatar. And then the funniest joke in the whole thing was, <laughs> He's like, yeah, Avatar, <laughs> Blue People. I love that movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, you mean the anime? Um, <laughs> I know. And he's like Stephen. Yeah. Like he's very patient with them because yeah. he finally he understands that Stephen is a like legitimate personality. Like he wasn't faking it to get away. Like he, like, like he knows that like the person he's after is not Stephen. It's Mark. Like he, you know, and. um no, which is interesting because that shows a little bit of mercy, I guess, in his behalf, you know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so then we, we get to the point where there's um, the Harrow ends up summoning an Anubis 
associated jackal monster <laughs> that attacks Grant at the museum. Um, just as uh, Grant is cornered in a restroom, he sees his reflection talking to him, <laughs> which is Mark, and he just basically says, you know, let me take control. And he agrees to, and then he transforms into Moon Knight, and then we have, uh, and we assume kills the jackal monster, mm-hmm. and we have the uh, whole uh, end of the episode. <laughs> Yeah, Moon Knight literally shows up like in the last like ten seconds. Of yeah, the... we did. We did have <coughs> like I've other heard that Moon Knight. We What's did that? have some other instances with mirrors throughout the episode where things would like glitch slightly in the mirror, where you know his reflection wouldn't match what he was doing to imply that you know mm-hmm. it was Mark in the mirror. That's the name. Yeah, of yeah, that's the name of my new sense. novel, by the way. It's called Mark in the Mirror. And um, Mark in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of like that. Mark in the mirror. Yeah. yeah, there was a few times where he was doing that. Um, I think a, a few times he actually did speak to Stephen, like yeah. not Kanshu, like actually Mark was speaking to yeah. him. He would say like, a couple a few things times here and there, like, but he was finally able to completely have a conversation with him in the bathroom there. Um, yeah, because we're about to be killed. And, um, yeah. But before that, though, Harrow was going to judge him, and the scales kept going. They would never, they would never um, land. They would just keep and infinitely going and then he says you know there's chaos in you so like you know Amit couldn't judge because there was nothing like it was you know yeah <clears throat> so and then he let him go so where do you think this is going um y- you know I think um <clears throat> you know I don't know because because Harrow said something too how Amit was betrayed by her fellow gods and her own avatar. So I'm starting to wonder what what that means exactly, and, and how how could how could an avatar, which is basically just like a manifestation of the god itself, betray the god? Because that would imply that they're like well, have like equal levels of power. Like, well, well, I mean, the thing is, is like Moon Knight is actually a god too. Well, he's an avatar, though. He's the avatar of God, so maybe Amit's, you know, man, um, you know, like uh, Avatar had sort of like a multiple personality thing too, and was able to betray. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, maybe. So I asked him, "Now this guy's a new avatar, apparently." Yeah. And um, and uh, so now we're gonna have a battle of gods, which that's gonna be interesting to see in the MCU. Um. And who knows? It could be one of those things where Amit might actually have legitimate grievances that has turned her into kind of how she is. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, maybe she had a point type of thing. Cause, cause he did say stuff like, you know, you know, if Amit were here, there would have been no Holocaust. There would have been no Armenian genocide, you know, because she would have been able to judge those things yeah. before they happened. Before they happened. You know, so, yeah. So you know there is a sort of sense of justice. It's not, it's not, it's not really a power trip. The, uh, the intention is not like a power trip, but then at the same time, it's like, well, you know, you just killed an old lady. You know, <laughs> yeah. And it, like it, it, it brings up that philosophical question too. Like, if you know something's going to happen, do you want to prevent it from happening before it happens? Like, if you could time travel and go back and kill baby Hitler, would you? You know, it's yeah, I like, probably would. But it wouldn't yeah, matter yeah. though because yeah someone else would come up yeah, who exactly. would be just as bad. And, yeah. and I mean, the thing is, is bad things happen throughout history, but sometimes those bad things had to happen to create change in the world. Even if, even if they were completely horrible things that happened, the world would be a different place if they didn't happen. So it's like kind of, you know, it's a paradox, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just hate to be one of the people that has to be a sacrifice for the new world. Oh, I know. Uh, they're coming to be, <clears throat> well, plus too, because like you said, like, well, you didn't say this, but like, um, you know, it's an unfortunate fact that, you know, technology, you know, almost always first manifests itself into like military weaponry. Yeah. And then it, and so like, so like all the technology we have now is a, basically a byproduct of weapons to some degree. That, you that, know? that, that, are, that are space <laughs> exploration because we wouldn't have Tang or Velcro. Um, but, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> Tang, yeah, exactly. We wouldn't have. Uh, that great tasting Kool Aid mock off or whatever. Um, <laughs> I've had it a few times. It's not that bad. Yeah. Um, I used to drink it a lot as a kid. But anyways, um, 
I don't know. Um, I'm really looking forward to see where this goes. Um, I, I do think that there's going to be a lot more to Harrow than we're seeing so far, and also a lot more, obviously, to Stephen Grant and Mark Spector and whatever other per- personalities he may have. Um, but it'll be interesting. It's going to be a six episode series. So, um, we're going to be covering this, uh, once a week for the next, uh, you know, six weeks here. So make sure you, I wish Marvel would do more than six episodes per series. Um, well, they do sometimes we've had like eight and 10 episodes. So, yeah. Yeah. Is this good? I hope they're going to do a season two though. Not just a one off, but, um, it's hard to say a lot of these things, and usually if we're going to get a season two, it's not going to be for a couple of years. But I do think that we will see more of uh, of Moon Knight in the future of the MCU, because I think he's going to probably, I got a feeling he might show up in like Blade, or if there's an Eternals 2, things of that nature, you know what I mean? Yeah, <clears throat> or even or like... his own movie. Yeah, that would be cool, or like... I was gonna say multiverse of madness, but I don't think so. Um, that he doesn't seem like he would be. Um, yeah, we don't know though. I mean, that movie is supposed to have like a cast of millions, so we'll see. <laughs> right, we're supposed to, apparently Patrick Stewart might be in it, but that could be anyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I heard uh, last week that I'm gonna be in it, but I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah. that's cool. <clears throat> My whole thing though is again, it's like I think we talked about this once before. Is you know, are gods the same in each universe? So, like, let's say if this Kanchu, like, oh, the same person in every single multiverse, not not like even like the same body. Yeah, so it's it, not like it one of those like, like hundred fixed personalities, like uh, like Wanda. Well, what I mean by that yeah. though is is like so for example like there's like a book called the american gods um or this is called american gods <clears throat> and um the the gods basically um have power based on how much worship they get from their devotees and um and at one point they said um you know jesus is like a billionaire in america because of all of like the televangelists and stuff like that but in afghanistan i saw him hitchhiking because like you know like 99.9 percent of the country's muslim you know muslims there so he's not getting any worship there which is a misnomer because muslims believe in jesus just not anyway that's a whole other thing anyway so yeah. um but but that but that implied though that they were they were like a jesus who was living in america and also a jesus living in afghanistan so that they're, they're physically two jesuses what i'm wondering though is in the multiverse, is it just one person? Like, not like, like, let's say there's a thousand different worlds, and you're gonna stack up a thousand different Jesuses with the same person, same personality. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm wondering is if it's just one person physically. Yeah. Within, you know, what I'm saying, you know, what I'm saying, I'm trying to say, I'm not really explaining it well. No, like, I, I understand what you're saying. I know it's okay. hard for others to understand, though. So, um, it's <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Well. <laughs> no, not no. What I, what I mean is not what, the way you're saying it, but I'm saying people that don't understand the whole idea of being like a fixed point in different things and like a, in different multiverses. So yeah. there could be, you know, and I mean, technically from what I understand, I think certain characters, even like Wanda are the same in every universe, even if they're not the same being, but they could still physically be the same being too. I don't know how it actually works. And I guess we'll find out in the multiverse of madness too. So, um, yeah, exactly. We'll find out if there's like if physical duplicates, but they still share the same exact personality and memories yeah. and whatever. And you know, which that would be crazy too, because that would be like an insane amount of power. Yeah. Um, you know, to collectivize. You know. <laughs> um. Yeah, and I, I do. I do want to point out. I think it's kind of interesting that they have chosen like four of these episodes are directed by Mohammed Diab, who is a an Egyptian film director too. So, okay. which is really cool yeah. that they you know, a show about Egypt, they actually have an Egyptian film director doing it. So Yeah. 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 <laughs> that is pretty cool. But um Yeah. Yeah, I mean I just I hope we see Kanshu more. Um <clears throat> I hope we get to see how why he's such a jerk to Steven, um, you know, personality wise, yeah. why he's why he is the way he is. If he's a good guy, bad guy, neutral in between. Um <clears throat> I like to meet Am- Amit too, I like to mm-hmm. see her and see what she looks like or yeah. how she interacts or um because like 
I gotta believe that Hero is not. I mean, Hero. I think obviously at this point is the avatar of Amit, but we haven't seen like his version of becoming Moon Knight. Like, because he even says once too when he's when he's judging that the guy, he says, "I, you know, I'm judging you with only a fraction of Amit's power." So like, yeah, that could be so you could have more power. Instant. Yeah, so like, who knows what he's gonna look like when he becomes, you know, the true avatar or personality. He might have the same exact um, thing that Moon, you know, because apparently Moon Knight is also a distinct personality from Mark and Steven itself. So it's so like, like Steven can't become Moon Knight, Mark can, but Moon Knight is not Mark or Steven. You know what I mean? So like, that's what I've heard at least. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I've heard. Because we'll see where that goes. Um, Anything else before we wrap things up here? Um. Just um, just watch out for crocodiles, I guess. You yeah. know, and um, <clears throat> it's always always a good thing to do. Yeah, watch out for crocodiles or people who wear shoes with glass shards in them, and or people who wear Crocs. That, or Crocs, definitely. Oh. <laughs> I think people wear Crocs are worse than than um, hero. But no, um, <laughs> and and watch out for people with moving tattoos. That tra- that's an interesting thing too. Because I'm sorry, I'm like rambling yeah. today, but like. I, I could have sworn I've seen another movie once <clears throat> where a guy had like a moving tattoo and it like had like powers. I don't know if I'm like imagining it, but like I'm sure um, that's been done before at least once okay. or twice. Sounds familiar to me too. I just don't know what it was. Um, yeah, I, I know that there there are a there is a superheroes either in the DC or the MCU that actually the tattoos on their body. Um possess powers themselves right okay i don't know if it's one of the uh like metas on the flash or something like that i can't remember but um I'm trying to think of where that would have been but anyways or maybe it was on he was on supergirl yeah maybe that might have been something there yeah. um but i know i've seen it somewhere before too <clears throat> anyways um folks make sure you uh Give us a five star review wherever you can on you know on the uh, iTunes or Apple Podcast or whatever they're calling it this week, and mm-hmm. uh, the um, the you know on uh, Stitcher on Spotify or wherever else you can. Also, um, be sure to check out our T Public, our Patreon, all of our social media sites. Um, and uh, also um, be good to each other. Yeah. You know, watch out for Crocs. Yep. And uh, wear, con- wear a condom. Yep. That's all I got to <coughs> say today. Yeah, I mean, just got to do it. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at CullenPark.com.